Okay, everybody, we are hot on the heels of Last Torah. If you haven't seen it, it's where we step on a thing here and it makes some lightning go off and a little fire. Now we're going to extend this little game island here. And then when we come into this area here, you're going to see just up ahead, right over there, we should have a monster spawn out. There he is. Now, how did we do that? Well, the trick is to use a player counter and we're going to connect it all up together with verse. All done. Let's go check out how to make this. Okay, we're inside UEFN, and this is just an extended tutorial from the last tutorial, so we're still using Shark Island. And I've added a couple things into this one. We've got an item granter that gives me a weapon. Item granters are very simple. If you've never used one before, just look inside of the content browser here in devices, put in item granter, drag it onto the stage, and then set it up to do its thing. Essentially, in this one, I've just set up there to be a sniper rifle, and I've given extra ammo. That's it. It's then receiving players are all. And then I have checked grant on game start. That gives me a weapon to do something with in this game. Now we've already got the trigger that we already know about. We've got our VFX spawners right here to create the lightning and the fire. And then right here, we've got a player counter. Now, if you've never used a player counter before, then this is a treat because what you can do is you can set up an area or a zone and that will count how many players are in that zone. And it's handy. It's just one of those things that can set off an event. It's like the trigger, but with a zone. So related. Now this will count how many players in there. Right now I'm just going to be detecting when a player comes in, but you can use this to say, well, if there are five players that have entered some area, then do a thing. So we're going to check that out. So to find this, we're going to look inside of the Fortnite devices. We just go player counter and it should show a player counter. Drag that into your scene. And then over in the details panel, we're going to make a couple of changes. So the first thing that I do is I set the target player count to one because I only care if somebody has come into the space. We want the info panel to be invisible. So uncheck this, it comes checked by default. We don't want the zone visible, but zone isn't actually visible by default anyway. So what we have to do is come down into the settings a little further down and we will use zone. So check that because by default it's unchecked. So check that. And then we're going to set the zone shape to a box. You can choose a cylinder as well. Uh, we just want a box. That's fine. And the time in zone to count should be zero. So it's instant. You can set this to run a, essentially it's just going to run a loop, a timed loop to check this many times, you know, uh, per, per minute. In this case, it's just checking all the time. And then uh, size of units is tiles. So you can set this tiles or meters. I'm just going to leave it as tiles. And I've set this to be something like three by two ish. That's probably fine because essentially we're just trying to detect when somebody comes across the grass here. So that's fine. That's done. Nothing more to do there. And then we can go over to our monster, which is a creature placer. So we can look inside of here again, go creature. And it is the creature placer. You just place them up there. I've made mine one of the bigger guys. It's kind of cool. You could use a creature spawner as well if you really wanted to, or you could use the guards. It's all kind of the same thing. We're going to spawn this creature when somebody enters this space here. So that's pretty cool. So the only thing left to do for this thing is set your creature type. And then what you want to do also is spawn only if needed. Just uncheck that. And what will happen is that uh, we can spawn this guy with verse. So let's write some verse code. Okay, so we are inside of verse now. And I've added two editables to our game device. And if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, you should just watch that and then you'll learn how to make this game manager if you want to. But I've added two devices in here, a boss creature, because he's a big guy, and he's a creature placer device equals creature place. So we instantiate it like this, make it an editable so we can attach it in the game. And we also have the player counter, which is a player counter device. So you know how to do this by now. We make editables, we connect up our devices and go from there. Now, what we want to do is see when somebody comes into that player counter area. So we do the counted event, subscribe to that on the player counter object and uh, call on player arrived. Now, once we have called on player arrived, we're going to pass in the agent because it is counting who comes in and it can pass who it is as well. We don't care about that, though. not this time. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't spawn this boss more than once. So we have a variable set up here. So we set var 
boss spawned. So we just want to know if the boss has been spawned. It's a logic or a Boolean, true or false. So we use logic and we set it to false to begin with. And we say, hey, is this false? Has the boss been spawned yet? And if not, then set it to true. So we use the set boss spawned equals true. So we set it to true. And then we spawn the creature. And this is how you spawn a creature out of a creature item placer. You just call spawn and it will create the creature for you. And that's it. That's how we can control creatures and the player counter to our advantage to sort of create a zone that detects when a player comes into it or can detect how many players come into it. Because if we take a look quickly at the player counter device code in here. There's a ton of stuff in here. So we can see when it succeeds. We can see when we've got that counted event, like we talked, removed event when a player leaves the area. We can enable and disable it in case we don't want to use it. So if we were to be even more thorough, we might disable this device now because we've used it. It's done its job. Don't need to do any more. And then there's there's other things that we can do in here as well. It's It's quite quite useful. We can also get the count. We can also make our own loop or we can have some other trigger. So say, for example, you have a room and you have all the players go in there and then you're just kind of waiting for somebody else to trigger some kind of door mechanism. And then it tests whether or not everybody's in the room, five people in the room, and then it opens up some other door. You can do all kinds of things with this player counter device. It's really handy. But that ends this tutorial. Nice and simple, easy, but I think very useful. Something that you can use in your game for sure. Any questions, let me know. If not, that's cool. And I'll see you guys next time.